Hey everyone, it's Evgeny and we're doing episode 4 of Portfolio Reviews. Uh, today in the studio of Anapex HQ, I have commercial photographer Max Richet. Max, welcome to the Anapex uh, HQ. So, um, introduce, I guess, yourself to the readers. Hi guys, uh, Max Richet, I'm a commercial photographer and uh, I work uh, mostly in the outdoors, adventure, uh, lifestyle for outdoor brands um, based in Paris, France and here in Canada as well. I guess with that we'll just get started. With sure, I'm really excited about it. Yeah. So our first photo uh, is post sound check by Mike Manny and Mike asks there is something in the shot that keeps catching my eye but I can't figure out what is it or why it does. I would love to get the max reaction and critique. I have tough skin so on whether there's really something or I'm just seeing things. It's a, it's a really interesting shot uh, as a, in terms of candid um, you know, like uh, maybe in between moments kind of uh, capture uh, and there's a great interplay between the three characters so that's why your eye keeps bouncing from one to the other because they're looking at each other, something's happening, this man is having his hand like he's, he's talking or he's expressing himself um, so that's probably why like the eye is, is intrigued um, and then if I were to go a little bit further than that I would say is it a keeper or not? Um, if you want to have like take it to the next level, I would clean. I would I would choose a photo with a, a little bit of a cleaner background and behind the man that's in the middle, because uh, mm -hmm. there's some stuff happening behind his hands, behind his head, and uh, to me it's not 100% like the good, like the perfect uh, capture of that moment, because it could be like more graphic, more cleaner, mm -hmm. more cleaner. Uh, and that would uh, make the image even stronger. So, so it's a good candid shot, yeah. but, and I really like the guy on the left. But yeah. at the same time, what we're seeing is that the colors are really uh, soft, like soft and warm, mm -hmm. and that works with that photo, yeah. but it's probably not, uh, like you can probably make it a lot cleaner, yeah. uh, more natural, neutral balanced. So there's something, so some work about this. What I don't like is the actually the water bottle uh, yeah. the guys had. I think it's, it's just really in the yeah movie. because otherwise it looks like 80s or 90s. Like yeah, you see the terminal on the left, but otherwise it looks like the shot from from the past. Right? The guys because, are stylish, yeah, and uh, yeah. the hat is really cool as well. And uh, you could you could guess there's a drum at the back, so it's really nice. But yeah, I agree with it, with your point. The the water bottle is a bit is a bit not uh, in in its place there. Yeah. Yeah. And overall, the, the, the photo is a little bit soft, right? Which may work in this case, but it's something that you might want to just, just sharpen that a little bit. Yeah, sometimes, you know, like technical perfection for those kind of shots is not really what matters. Yeah. It's more like the mood. And I think, like I said, it, again, it's not really like the, it's the moment in between moments that's really exciting here because you're really into the scene, like you're, you're kind of feeling their discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't mind too much that the, the, the depth of field is really shallow, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, cleaner, maybe uh, work a little bit more, uh, maybe maybe you took several pictures of that scene and maybe another of those has a cleaner background if the, 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 the people behind the man in the middle moved in between shots or something, uh, or maybe not, but you know, it doesn't always happen the perfect way. So, so on to our next shot, uh, it's called Urban Life uh, Freestyle 2 by Sebastian Val Uter, and Sebastian asks, about the spontaneous action shooting and lighting. Uh, so, Max, what do you think? It's probably in your domain. So. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, urban and like free run, parkour, uh, slack line, as I guess is the case here. Uh, I really like those. Um, so, first, first reaction, like uh, the most obvious thing, I would not put the watermark there. Uh, I, I agree. Yeah, I know it's like you want to probably like make sure nobody steals it, but just it, it kind of peels the the beautiful line of the slack line uh, you, and then it makes me wonder is that like a, a, a weird post -production, production effect that you put this green line and then I realize it's a slack line if you had no watermark it'd be much more obvious that this is the shot this is what happened so I would just remove that first um, there's a lot of thought in terms of colors like there's a green uh, fountain and then there's a green slack line there's a green grass what I would do in, in terms of lighting there, 
uh, I would bring a lot more of the tones of the background uh, into the photo. Like it's black, so it's, black. it's graphic. That's cool. Uh, I used to do those things too, mm -hmm. and, and you know you, you want to focus on, on the on the athlete doing doing his yeah. thing. Uh, but uh, I would also bring more tones like the grass. It could really be beautiful too. It's green, so you could take advantage of that. Uh, a bit more light. Uh, usually, what kills a photo is just because it lacks a little bit of light, light you know, yeah. like ambient or additional time. You know what I feel? I feel that this photo is missing uh, some of your uh, touch <laughs> <laughs> and like have a little bit of the motion blur effect, yeah, that'd be beautiful too. Uh, yeah. which would be absolutely beautiful to add because that would just yeah, add perfect. a lot of action and motion to the to the photo and just like make it so pop that it would be just like beautiful. Yeah, I mean, obviously the pose is great, like it's, it's very well positioned. Uh, that would add definitely a lot. Uh, that's another setup that is more gear, it's more complicated. Uh, but even like maybe just exposing more for the background, I know it's night, so maybe it's tricky, but uh, uh, maybe do that uh, earlier in the night or uh, take advantage of that fountain because it's beautiful, mm -hmm. but also like let me see a little bit more of the, the other elements that are, you can guess there are things with the lights of the Absolutely. houses. Yeah. But uh, it's too bad because you don't really get to see what's happening around. So mm -hmm. I'd love to see more colors, a bit more uh, vibrant things in there. I agree, yeah. So no watermark, uh, Sebastian, and uh, just like more lights. Yeah, otherwise great shot. Yeah. yeah. The next photo is from Masik Dams. And for me, the photo tells the story, especially together with other people in the series. The story is the journey. I would like to find out if the story is visible not only to me but to others and if it's not convincing how can I tell the story better? I would like to speak to uh, the storytelling aspect of that photo. Uh, when I look at that photo I don't see the story. Uh, I see a beautiful uh, girl with a suitcase mm -hmm. uh, and if I look at the series and the rest of the series it's uh, beautiful shots also uh, very uh, nice symmetries mm -hmm. or very well composed but always this girl with the suitcase. Um, storytelling is, is tough and it's a goal. I also pursue myself. I try to mm -hmm. always try to think about this. More co bringing more context to it, uh, more, more space around her, um, let it breathe, but not just focus on her, but also what's I, happening. Oh, I agree. Uh, yeah. would I, bring I, I think like just having a suitcase doesn't make it's uh, not story. Doesn't, doesn't make a story. Like is she going somewhere? Why is she standing? Like yeah. is she waiting for someone? Is she homeless? Yeah. Like what is going on, right? And this doesn't tell us anything. She is in the in the space with broken windows, yeah. uh, and that's pretty much all we know, right? She's so, pretty. Yeah, but she's pretty. <laughs> but I mean, like that's, but not, that's a not a story. <laughs> exactly, right? The next shot we have is wall right by David Bergson, and David asks, "I want general tips about my action photography." The photo is called Wall Ride, and we see the photo uh, of the mountain biker going on a track. Uh, what do you think about the shot? The the shot is good. Um, I would like there is some composition efforts. Obviously, like there's an impressive sky, and uh, and the trick is, is nice. It's very graphic to have this this curved uh, wall there. Mm -hmm. um, I would think though that there's missing some light. Some light's missing there again. Um, to put the subject more in evidence, uh, to stylize the photo more. Uh, yeah. Maybe that shadow also, uh, it kind of uh, interferes too much with what's happening. Maybe that would have meant uh, shooting earlier before the hill would have cast yeah. the shadow. Or Look, I think uh, we see beautiful skies here, David. Uh, but what, what is missing is that everything else, the bottom part, is like completely the most in, important. In the most yeah. important part is actually in shadows. So you have really good top part, but the bottom part is just like actually ruined by, by, by lack of light and a speed light or yeah, just, just a flash some light to put on the or putting yourself in front of the subject instead of kind of like above it would probably make a, a huge difference. So what I see here on the left side is just like full of shadows. The left, left bottom part is really dark. Um, what I also don't like, and again, like, look, it's honest critique and stuff, uh, it's cut. Right, it's cropped uh, on the right side. It's probably like the whole shot that you got, and it's cropped with the wheel. So uh, for me, that's losing a little bit of that uh, act, like composition. It just kind of like 
skills is a little bit. Yeah, like bringing some artificial light, like strobes, would have been a way to also uh, make the texture of the wood pop. Like, I think mm -hmm. we would relate a lot more with more vibrance on the front, uh, on the front part of the image. Uh, so definitely, uh, it's halfway there, mm -hmm. and uh, with more lights again, uh, maybe artificial, uh, just uh, to stage that shot more with the subject, the athlete, and ask him to perform a couple of times, and mm -hmm. like get the really nail the shot with with your additional light would have uh, would have made a great shot there. Yeah, what, what's great about sports shots is that you know if you if you can ask the um, the sportsman to do it again and again you can do the uh, manual focus and you can just wait for the person just get the right yeah. shot uh, over and over again so yeah uh, if, if that was a candid from an event or something then that's another story but then mm -hmm. it's it's really hard getting like really good photos out mm -hmm. of events when you don't control what's happening mm -hmm. uh, so definitely you know if you attend like some competition and you just capture that image there's like 0.1% of chances that it will be the, the keeper for mm -hmm, your book, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, like you stage the, a session with the athletes, you bring your light, you, you, you go scouting, you make sure you have the, the sky, uh, the, the sun also lighting the whole mm -hmm. scene, and you ask him to do it again until you nail it. Or you just turn around a little bit, change point of view, so that he, he actually uh, so is more up. detached yeah. on yeah. the sky or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So... Our next photo is Sage Burning Sky by Tor Bertin, and he asks, uh, while I'm very pleased with the colors on the uh, on this shot, I feel that I've gotten somewhat close to what the image wants to portray, and I would like to make a sage bush on the left play a larger role in the image, amplifying the sunset and vice versa. Seeing the brilliant warm sunset against such iconic plants, uh, of arid regions of Montana was a pretty amazing moment. I would like to find a way to capture these uh, uh, symbols, I guess. So, symbiosis. You know, my first thought is that the sunset is definitely great. It's like beautiful colors, really bright, really uh, saturated. And then we look down and there's no foreground. So, there's all, all those great examples of landscape photography on 400 px and if you look at most of them, the, the best examples, they have really striking foreground that leads you to the background. In your case, we have the light in the skies and we're lacking a little bit of foreground. So like you're not close enough to bushes, they're not lit uh, well enough. And just the photo between two bushes, it doesn't have a center. It's just kind of like your uh, your eyes are looking to the left and see one bush, and then to the right and see seeing another another bush. Uh, would you agree with me, Max? Yeah, definitely. I mean, landscape photography seems easy, but it's definitely not. Uh, yeah. it, it takes a lot of time and 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 foresight, and you you need to really plan your shot very well. So, making uh, making a great symmetry, like a very central or like a line of of uh, mm -hmm. of direction in there, is important. But also. If you have the great sky there, you want to spend time maybe like uh, with a neutral filter on the sky, uh, like just to to be able to uh, expose more of the foreground. Or mm -hmm. you want to bring some light again, you can. In some uh, landscape photography examples, it works very well too. Uh, you want to make something happen there and and be gentle on post production as well. Uh, something's weird is happening in the hills at the background. It's it's blue and a little bit blackish and. Uh, uh, the sky is great again, I agree, but yeah. uh, the rest, um, you need to have a system, like uh, you need to uh, have tools for that because uh, there are tools uh, like uh, have filters or mm -hmm. you, you mask it with something, you mask the sky or uh, you do long exposures. There's lots of things uh, that will make this pop mm -hmm. and, and even the composition, even the photo out so your eye can wander in there. You know, w one thing that catches my attention is that we can see a little bit of the river mm -hmm. and it's glowing, right, yeah. with the reflection. You can't see enough of it. You can see enough of it, yeah. Like, I you really more. want yeah. more and make it, like, closer to the, like, just walk. Take a ladder and go higher. Yeah, so yeah. You can walk see to 100 the, meters, yeah. get to that uh, water, and then you can have, like, really great reflection. Maybe there is a bush somewhere that you can kind of, like, capture in your foreground. So, um yeah, that's, that's, I guess, uh, all we can say for this. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, on to our next shot. It's called Peaceful Happiness by Michael Cogan. And Michael asks, I'm still exploring my style and would love any feedback on coloring and composition. 
I would also really like to work on my lighting. I guess this photo is in your court. Sure, yeah. I mean, if you talk about lighting, like my first uh, thought is, I think photos with your son at the back mm -hmm. always give the same kind of light. You are looking at a subject with the sun and it's mm -hmm. evenly exposed and it's nice. Um, the girl looks nice and uh, the, 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 the grass is cool, but uh, I would definitely try to move around, get another point of view, maybe backlit, maybe more life stylish, uh, more interesting in sort of stylizing the image more mm -hmm. so that it, it, it actually is more interesting in terms of what's happening because she's contemplating, but that's all. You got a flat kind of even light on there. Even though you have blurred background, uh, I'd be cautious not to distract the eye too much with those mm -hmm. elements. They are right there. They don't, they don't interfere too much, but uh, definitely on t in terms of lighting, try and move around, try to like, get a shoot like mm -hmm. backlit, something like that with the sun in your face. Experiment with that so you can get more interesting, like more original uh, lighting there. You know what, I really like the shot. Uh, what I'm, what catches my attention is actually skin tones, mm -hmm. and I feel that the left uh, arm is more yellowish and the right is more pinkish, and it's kind of like a little bit uneven. I would love to have a bit more post-processing on the arms, just to make it so soft and smooth, a as same as your rest of the background, which mm -hmm. is really soft and really smooth. So just keep the same for for the girl because yeah. it, it just it, it's a little bit rough and I feel that you can make it magical with like a little bit of improvement uh, and actually like you don't need to go anywhere and reshoot that you just you just open Photoshop and uh, just redo a little bit of skin tones um, but overall I like it like I agree with you that more original lightings probably would be great for the shot uh, though I would be content w with that, sure. so, so yeah. I, I think I, I like the shot. No, definitely. Yeah. So our next shot is called Dark Water Reloaded by Alexander Schimpf. And Alexander asks, I would like to hear Max's opinion about overall composing, skin tones and model pose in this picture and all the about the post-processing. We kept this because I think it's original in the way that you hardly see long exposures like that with water, uh, running water and a subject. And uh, it's it, it's good combination. I think uh, there's originality in the way it's composed and it's uh, the natural way that the waterfall is running mm -hmm. leads to the subject of the foreground. It's, it's nice. Um, there's a mood there, like very com contemplative. In terms of post-production though, yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's a bit weird that it's so desaturated at uh, the background like we we're, we're discussing I agree. Yeah, before. It's, it um, seems like the uh, the only tones that are left is the model and her dress. And it feels like either the colors of the photo are a little bit muddy mm -hmm. or maybe not as pronounced. And that's why Alexander went with uh, black and white processing mm -hmm. for, for the scene. It's a bit bluish, so it's not fully black and white, but uh, it could it could be it could do with a bit more, mm -hmm. like yeah, you don't do the like all black with one color element anymore. It's like, yeah, so it's just like it's a no no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I would be careful then then because even if it's not, people tend to think that it is. So yeah. you know, I'm thinking it might work as well as a full black and white if you can have a dress just pop up a little bit uh, by selecting the color and just doing the black and white conversion properly. Uh, and I think that would make it really striking black and white photo. Yeah, very original anyways, yeah. Okay, and we're on to our last shot of, uh, of this portfolio review. And I kept the, <laughs> the best for the last shot. This photo is called Sparkling Waters and it's by me. Um, so nice. go ahead, I have tough skin, <laughs> go trash this photo. Oh, wow. Um, no, first, I, I like the photo. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's original to have the, all the sparkling uh, droplets around the, the water border. Is that? Uh, it's wake border. Wake yeah. border. Yeah. So I really like it. Um, lighting, uh, natural light, yeah. Uh, action shots like that, you don't have much of a choice. You are on the boat. You have to I was thinking it. about that. I was thinking of bringing uh, flash and just like flashing, but the, the guy is pretty far, so like. No, no so that, that this works. One is natural, um, yeah. It's the focus really much on him, and uh, yeah, like I said, it's it's an interesting uh, 
like you're in the element, you're like you're, you're in the scene because of those droplets in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe what I would have done, I don't know if that was possible at the time, like push it a little bit further, could he jump, like was he able to, or uh, could he like be doing something a bit more graphic, maybe uh, a bit more in the sky, like uh, in, in the way that uh, this is um, still very, um, uh, it's not quiet, but it's like, it's, it's, it's really chill. It's right? chill, yeah, yeah he's, he's wise. You yeah, know, he's yeah, not yeah. doing like crazy stuff. Yeah, um, but I love the photo. Maybe, maybe uh, if if he was able to, would have tried something like like a little flare, a little jump, a little something. Jumps are possible uh, for this shot. Then uh, the only thing that would be missing is the uh, the sparkles up yeah. front. So I'm like, you know, picking yeah, no, exactly. picking sparkles yeah, yeah. or the jumps. So I, I, oh, the I eye goes that. well in the middle, like yeah. it's vignetted a little bit so that we focus more on the subject. So um, uh, it's, it's nice colors with the sun. You could see the sun in the, in the droplets. So. What I would recommend Evgeny to do is actually get a little lower vintage point so that the head wouldn't be at the same the level same as the trees, but just kind of like pop That's it up. That's a cheaper way of like getting him in the sky. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah. And just getting a little lower, like yes, it's a boat, there's no, nowhere to go. But just kind of like getting camera a little lower and just uh, getting head above the trees so it will pop a little more and maybe like create a little bit of action, more action to that. If you were really like into that, you could also drop in the water with a case yep. and like be dragged behind the boat and get that viewpoint from like really, really close really to close. the water. Really close, yeah. That'd yeah. be uncomfortable, but... Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing that, I'm actually doing that next time. Nice. On the, on the tube behind the photo with the case and people flying over me or nice. like next to me. So Let's go so, for it. So we'll see how it's going to go. How many cameras will I lose? Doing that one. Looking forward to the result there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, with that, uh, this is the, the end of the Portfolio Reviews episode four with Max. Max, thank you so much for coming and uh, doing this. So it was My pleasure. pleasure. It was really exciting. Like having to explain <laughs> teaches you a lot also. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I think we learned a lot more today. So thanks a lot. Thank you. See you guys.